the Lord gives water and victories. In our last story, we learned about the protecting power of God. Pharaoh had pursued the Israelites to recapture them, but God parted the seas so they could run to freedom. God defeated Pharaoh once and for all. We also learned about the providing power of God and how he gave Israel water and food when they were wandering in the wilderness. In this story, we will learn about God's continued provision and how the Israelite slaves are forced to become warriors as well, as inspired by the book of Exodus. Hello, I'm Jack Graham with today's episode of The Bible in a Year. In our last episode, we saw God lead the Israelites to safety, delivering them from Pharaoh's hand and out of bondage into freedom. And they crossed the parted waters of the Red Sea. What a miracle. We also witnessed the Israelites complaining and grumbling like impatient children who quickly forgot about God's care for them. Through it all, God continued to provide and promised that as long as they followed Him and trusted Him, things would go well. Today, we will see how God provides once again, even as complaints continue. Listen to Moses' exasperated response to the people, calling them out for their forgetful, unfaithful hearts. Then listen to what God commands Moses to do. We'll also hear a new chapter in their story. Their wandering will stop as they set up a camp in enemy territory, and God will call them to battle. Let's listen now to this reading. The sweet joys of freedom from slavery lasted only a moment. Now they wandered in the heat of day and slept in the cold of night. Their lips were parched and their feet were tired. Israel camped at Rephidim, and there was no water for them to drink. Already forgetting the past provision of God, the people quarreled and complained. Give us water, they demanded to Moses. Growing more and more annoyed with their childish complaining, Moses replied, Why do you argue with me as if God has not already been faithful? But the people continued to grumble. Thirsty and tired, they cornered Moses and said to him, Why did you bring us out of Egypt just to kill us and our children with thirst? They grew more and more violent, angry, and entitled towards Moses. Moses rubbed his forehead, also thirsty and tired. He turned to God and said, What am I going to do with these people? Lord, they are getting ready to stone me. God spoke to Moses with a patient and loving voice. Depart from the people with some of the elders. Make sure to take your staff with you. So Moses did as God commanded and departed to the rock of Horeb. Strike the rock and water shall come out of it for the people to drink, God said. And Moses did so in front of all the elders of Israel. He took his staff and broke the rock and water flowed endlessly from it. God commanded the elders to watch so they might see his provision with their own eyes. They would need to see God at work and trust him for greater problems than thirst were approaching. In the land of Rephidim, where Israel camped, was the kingdom of Amalek. Desiring to drive them out of the land, the Amalekites attacked Israel frequently. Men, women, and children were killed and taken. This was a new threat Israel had not expected. Israel, once slaves, had to become warriors. Moses called Joshua, a young man who had shown great promise and leadership. Choose men to go out and fight with Amalek, Moses commanded. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the staff of God. Joshua left to go gather men able and willing to battle. They armed themselves with spears and swords they had taken from Egypt, along with any staffs, hammers, or farming tools they had with them. Israel was not yet a polished nation. They had no commanders, no armor, and no battle strategy. Instead, they had a group of men hardened from years of slavery, desperate to keep their freedom. They had faithful leaders who loved them, and they had a God who was able to call fire from heaven and part seas to free them. So Joshua gathered his men, and they marched to fight the Amalekites. They marched forward, afraid and untested in battle, but hearts filled with confidence in God. Their marching turned to running as they clashed swords and clubs with the armies of Amalek. 
screams from battle could be heard in the distance. On the hill overlooking the battle stood Moses. Moses held up his staff as he had done when God parted the Red Sea. His hands were held high, the universal symbol of victory. Moses' old bones grew tired. While his arms were up, Israel would begin to prevail over the Amalekites. When his arms waned or rested, the Amalekites would begin to overtake Israel. Moses' arms grew weary and his shoulders trembled. Sweat beat down his brow and his eyes were fixed on his people below. Aaron and Hur came up the hill with Moses and held up his arms under him. Moses would not leave, and the sun began to set over the battle. Joshua swiped his sword through the crowded battlefield, drenched in the blood of his enemies. His movements were like a dance as he cut the flesh of the Amalekites. Roars of righteous anger bellowed from his throat. Occasionally... Joshua would catch a glimpse of Moses with his arms stretched out over the battlefield. The strength of the Lord filled Joshua and all the warriors with him. As the sun departed over the horizon, God gave Israel their first victory. Blood and dust covered the men of God. Weary smiles laced their faces and tired laughter could be heard for miles. Moses gazed at his men from a distance hearing the voice of the Lord in his ear. Write this as a memorial in a book and recite it to Joshua continually, God said. And Moses built an altar to the Lord there. God had freed Israel from slavery, parted seas to protect them, and provided sustenance for them to survive. Now, God had given them a new work. They unified and protected one another. They bled for each other and put their lives on the line to save the ones they loved. The beautiful beginnings of a mighty nation was unfolding before their eyes. God has faithfully provided passage and provision for His people. But their hearts are so easily filled with faithlessness and fear and dissatisfaction. Scarce water at camp drives them to complain again. The grumbling spreads like a virus, toxic through the camp as they go to Moses once again and complain. Why isn't God coming through? Why is God not taking care of us? So Moses is exasperated with his people. He is angry, angered that they seem to be so easily forgetting what God has done. So he rebukes the people sternly. Why do you act like God is not faithful? God speaks to Moses and has him call elders to witness as God commands Moses to strike a stone with his staff. Water freely pours from this place where water shouldn't be, a miracle in the desert, water in the desert, something that only God could do. The elders and the people needed to see this with their own eyes because they were about to face conflict in a whole new way. As they settle in the camp near the Amalekites, they find themselves under attack. They're like sitting ducks. Men, women, and children are killed by Amalekite warriors. These former slaves knew nothing of battle, but they believed God and gathered weapons and tools. A young man by the name of Joshua steps up as a leader. He'll be a leader for many years to come. Joshua leads them into battle, and Moses, led by God, watches from a hill with his staff in his hands, and Moses raises his arms, calling on the Lord in prayer to win the fight for the people of God. As long as his hands are raised, the Israelites prevail in the battle. He may not actually be engaged on the front lines of the battle, but Moses is being the man of prayer, the leader that God has called him to be. Moses is now a different man. He is no longer that fugitive living in the desert. But his encounter with God in the burning bush and to see the hand of God moving in Pharaoh's palace and through the Red Sea, Moses is now a man of God, one of the greatest men who ever lived. He's filled with God's power, and he prays, and he prays with victory in his heart and in his hands. But Moses, being an older man, begins to tire, and his arms begin to sag, and the Amalekites begin to get the upper hand. But Aaron and a man named Hur support his arms. It's a beautiful picture of prayer. Joshua and his army are given the victory. So untrained, weary slaves emerge victorious over seasoned Amalekite soldiers. 
But the people know it was God's protection, not their own strength. And Moses built an altar to acknowledge the victory that God gave them. It can be tempting to take credit for what God does when something amazing happens in our lives or to forget that God gives us the victory or even forget to pray and ask for the victory. But let today's reading be a reminder that God is the one who gives us victory over every enemy in our lives. In spiritual warfare, we have victory in Christ. Though we do not build physical altars to remember our victories, let us find ways to show ourselves and others that God goes before us to fight our battles. It is not our own strength that brings deliverance, but God's strength, His power working through us. In fact, our victory is in Jesus. Next time, we'll hear God reaffirm His covenant and give His people simple rules for life. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for today's scripture, that you miraculously delivered your people in the face of a seasoned army and in a battle that apparently they could not win, but did win because of the power of prayer and your power upon the people's lives. We thank you that in our battles, you are fighting for us and that we fight our battles on our knees praying. Help us to pray for one another and hold each other's arms high in victory In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, amen. Thank you for listening to today's Bible in a Year podcast. I'm Pastor Jack Graham from Dallas, Texas. Download the Pray.com app and make prayer a priority in your life. If you enjoyed this podcast, share it with someone you love. By sharing this podcast, you can make a difference in someone's life. And if you want more resources on how to tap into God's power for successful Christian living, be sure to visit Jack Graham. Dot org. God bless. This episode is sponsored by MediShare, an innovative healthcare solution for Christians to save money without sacrificing quality.